Hey guys, Comet Turtle here. Joining me today is Rook the Crow. <laughs> and today, I've got an announcement. This turtle's going up to Midwest Fur Fest, also known as MFF. Me too. Yes, he did. The crow will be joining me. And that she's going to do the opposite of normal of crows and fly north for the winter. Anyway, if you guys follow my channel uh, and see me at the convention, don't be afraid to come up and say hi. And maybe to her as well. I don't know. Hey, no pecking the turtle. Anyway, while we're doing this, I figured today would be a great day to do a top 10 video. I don't have 10 fingers. Why did the crow have 10 fingers and I only have 3? Help me. Hey. Anyway, we're doing a top 10 10 video of do's and don'ts for conventions. Not just for conventions, but conventions in general. We'll each trade off doing five and five. I still don't have five fingers. I'll do five do's, she'll do five don'ts. The do's. You know what I'm trying to say. She'll, I'll do five do's, she'll do five do's. I'll do five don'ts, she'll do five don'ts, but we'll be trading off between those five. Fur brains first. Why am I first? Because you're the, you're the fur brain. Okay. So one thing I think you should do, this is probably more for furry conventions, but try to look for those lounges that they have so you can actually defurify when you start to overheat. What she means is uh, find your find out where the closest uh, furry lounges at any given point. That's what I said. Get yeah, actual word for it. Yeah, this way you know where to go. If you start to overheat in your fursuit, and you don't have to end up poodling around the whole place and trying to cool down. That being said, if you have to poodle for a medical reason, or you simply cannot take a, the heat under a full fursuit, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But speaking of, my first do is do take frequent breaks if you fursuit. You don't want to be falling over or fainting and then paramedics get called because they will cut you out of your fursuit and not peel it off uh, the correct way. Yeah, you don't want to spend thousand dollars to have to replace a fursuit just because you didn't drink enough water or cool down enough. Um, okay, so one thing I have is to try to do a quick tour of the convention. This way you can know where everything is before you end up like spending all your money in one area only to find out there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in another. Do number two for me follows the six two one rule. What does that mean? That is it six hours of sleep, two meals a day, where at least you eat something. I don't mean a single Pringle chip because you can't eat just one. Seriously, have you ever tried that? It's painful. And at least one shower or bath at the day. Because you don't want to be the musky husky and get the breeze injured. Yeah. You just left me something to say. <laughs> Shut up. This is a new persona. In case anyone wondering on his sister or who you've seen on this site as the fox. Oh, keep, make sure to keep an eye on your stuff. I know this is more like air ports, but you never know if someone could just end up walking off with your stuff while there. If you're with a group, have at least one person watch your stuff if they're if you're all going to be going to different things while at the convention. If it's in the hotel room, that's fine. But, like, say you have to bring a purse or something with you. Make sure someone's always watching your stuff. 
because you never know about people out there. Do number three for me. Do take pictures. Because no matter where you go, oh, and no matter how much your budget is, because you're going to run out of money eventually. Okay, pictures are generally free. You know, if you take pictures of stars or something. And when I say stars, I mean famous people. In which case, they might charge you. But pictures are generally free. So you always have a picture. Make sure when you go to a fairy convention that you pack all of your equipment correctly. Like, one video I saw someone mention getting one of those hard suitcases. That way there's less chances of your costume, your fursuit being crushed while you're on the airport, in the airport or something. No one likes a flat furry head. That being said, that there are a ton of videos out there on how to properly pack a fursuit. Number four, do. Do compliment the artist that you see. Doesn't matter if they're a performer or someone who will do a sketch. If they're doing the art for you, but you have money to pay for it, it doesn't hurt to pay a compliment. Do you make sure to check out what events are available in the, at the convention? You never know, there could be something that was thrown in last minute. So, like, say you go and you find, end up finding out that, like, Kari Ru, who is making a surprise guest yes, panel. panel, thank you. Or a meet and greet, yeah, anyway. exactly. Always double check these things. You never know what could be happening, what could have been cancelled. Double check. Never hurts it's to do that at a convention. Rule number five for me, you know, for the dudes, do try to make new friends. And a lot of time, and when you go to a convention, you'll have a chance to meet wonderful people from across the world. Well, who knows? You might actually hit it off with a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it like that, people. Get your mind all together. No. Bad turtle. I pet dumb folks to pet the turtle. <clears throat> dumb folks the turtle. <laughs> don't tip the turtle. Or, don't tip the turtle over, people. Be a part of game up. Alright, that's the do's, and now for our top 10 don'ts. Alright, so don't forget to shower. Like you mentioned earlier, with the 6 2 1 rule, you should take at least one shower a day. You definitely do not want a for freezing inch coming out and for freezing you. Plus, no one, like you said, no one wants to be a husky musky. Musky husky. Musky husky. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bird brain. Yeah. And do not number one for me. Don't pick fights. If you can get in a verbal argument, sure. But don't physically start a fight. Because that's a great way to get kicked out and not get your money back. Don't bully other fursuiters. There was this one story a long time ago about how a young kid who had came in with a maximal head, you know those big um, mascot heads, right. and some other guys started bullying them. This actually ended up causing the whole furry community to band together and support the kid, but still, these sort of things can hurt. Lots of the people there can't afford full fursuits, as you can see, like with us. Or they're like kids who are still growing, and well, if they get a full fursuit, they'll end up outgrowing it within a year or two. Sometimes faster, depending on the kid. And growth spurt. Yeah. So, don't pick on people. Not everyone can afford a, afford a full fursuit. Don't, number two for me. Don't go up to an artist and, and tell them that you you uh, can do it yourself at home, um, or have a buddy at home who can do it for you cheaper. Or better. Because, quite frankly, 
It drags the artist down. Yeah, I like to draw a lot too, and it always hurts when people make fun or criticize and steal work. I mean, yeah, there are a bunch of different skill levels out there. That does not mean you can go around and say, oh, that just looks ugly because it's not up to your level or is a different style. Don't leave your trash everywhere. Lots of places I go to for public events like this, you'll see a whole bunch of trash. Well, not a whole bunch, but a lot of people will leave their trash around. And that just brings down the fun for a lot of people because if they go sit, need to sit down somewhere or just want to relax they have to deal with other people's trash and it's, I personally feel this one and I work at somewhere that has eatery inside and you'll be surprised how many people will actively just leave their trash at the table uh, making us workers work hard and we don't get paid for it and it'd be nice if we get paid like an extra dime in a, in, in for per, 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 per tables we have to clean up, but still, you don't get paid for it. So don't force others to clean up after yourself, uh, even if it's your own mother. Or don't, number three, don't, don't take other people's belongings. Um, this is an unfortunate fact about any public event. And people have a, will try to use their five finger, or how many fingers, in my case, discount, and then try to get items for free. Yeah, that's just not cool in any situation, people. Uh, whether from a dealer's table or from a roommate, unfortunately. So don't do that, and for those of you who are victims of this, Report it right away to convention staff. Don't be one of those entitled people who say that they should not have to pay for anything. Those type of people just ruin events or just people's days in general. If you ever watch like r slash reddit, you'll see all these stories of people who are entitled and think that Oh, you're just a bunch of kids in costumes. Why should I have to pay for something when you're just playing? Or something like that. Some stupid excuse or... Yeah. Don't be one of those entire people who try to get out of pain for things. A lot of these people actually use this as their livelihood, so don't do that. And don't number four. Don't bring in and prohibited weapon. And, and as times get tougher, and very much, and more and more public, like, like, more and more events happen on the news of Matt Pan, any weapon you bring in that's not on the list of approved material will get you uh, not only a ban from the convention, but most likely have a record with the police. If you bring anything, just bring in the fake stuff. Nothing real. Well, nothing that can get you in trouble. With that being said, contact convention staff ahead of time. And check with them that your props are okay to bring in. Okay, my last one is don't bring your pets to a convention unless it's like one of those actual pet conventions for like the pet society or something like that. Yeah. Or if it is, or if you do, make sure you take care of your own pet and not leave it for someone else to take care of. I mean, any presents it might leave. Last zone for me. Alright. Oh yeah. This one kind of goes hand in hand with do take pictures, but always don't take pictures of people without their permission. And nobody wants to have photos of themselves running around on the internet of them shoving a hot dog in their face, but they're in an eating contest. Yeah, and some people just feel uncomfortable having their pictures out on the internet, or having the strange people come up to them and flash a camera and 
like in their face. Whether it's personal preferences or if it's a health issue, something like that. Always ask permission before taking pictures of people. Like even the Kari Rue or Stormy the Fold, those guys, they prefer if you ask their permission before you take their, their pictures. Yeah, take their pictures. Yes, that way they can give you a cute little pose. Uh, or, I tell you, not right now because they're busy running off to the Hitler's Lounge. Alright, and the video this time. And if you like what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications when my next video airs. Leave a like or maybe a comment. And I hope to see you all next time or at the convention. And until next time, John